in this session we are going to discuss about jury's stability test see first of all we will analyze the stability of the sample data control system in the case of a sample data control system and the system is said to be stable if all the poles of the set transfer function of the system lies inside the unity circle in set plane see we have studied the stability condition in the case of laplace transform or s domain function in that case all the poles should lie on the left half of the s plane when we are coming to the set plane or set transform uh, the sample data control system is stable if all the poles of the set transfer function of the system lies inside the unit circle in the set plane that is a condition so we will be given by a set transfer function uh, of the sample data control system and we can express that in the form of h of z is equal to z of z by r of z so that can be expressed in the form of a polynomial that is uh, a0 into p of z by q of z where a0 is a constant and p of z is a numerator polynomial and q of z is the denominator polynomial so here the characteristic equation is the denominator polynomial so we can say that um, characteristic equation is q of z equal to 0 so the roots of this characteristic equation uh, are the poles so those poles should lie on the lie inside the unity circle that is a condition for stability in the case of sampled data control system okay so let us uh, analyze the stability of the sampled data control system using jury stability test that is in your syllabus so first of all jury stability test is used to determine whether the roots of the characteristic polynomial lies within a unity circle or not so we will conduct the jury test in two parts first we will check for necessary condition for stability then we will check for sufficient condition for stability and first of all let us discuss about the necessary condition for the stability so we will be given by set transfer function that is f of z will be given so let here f of z be an nth order characteristic polynomial of the sample data control system and it has got the form f of z equal to a n z raised to n plus a n minus 1 z raised to n minus 1 plus etc plus a 0 that will be equal to 0 that is your f of z and that is order is n that you remember and here a n greater than 0 and a n minus 1 etc up to a 0 etc are the coefficients of this f of z and the necessary condition to be satisfied for the stability of the system with characteristic polynomial f of z are first condition is f of 1 greater than 0 and second condition is minus 1 raised to n f of minus 1 greater than 0 so this is the necessary condition so we will be given the characteristic polynomial f of z so in that when you put z equal to 1 then the value of f of 1 should be greater than 0 next condition is in this you have to put z equal to minus 1 and you should find this quantity minus 1 raised to n f of minus 1 where n is the order of the characteristic polynomial so this quantity should be greater than 0 so these are the two necessary conditions for the stability if these two conditions are satisfied then we can say that the system uh, is necessarily stable so again once we check the necessary condition we have to ensure the sufficient condition for stability so we can check the sufficiency for stability by using two methods and first method is method one for testing stability so here we have to form a table and here it is indicated the um, different rows and there will be 2n minus 3 rows where n is the order of the characteristic polynomial so we have to first mark 2n minus 3 rows that is the first condition for forming this table and we have to put the uh, set values z raised to 0 z raised to 1 etc up to z raised to n in the upper row and we have to first write the coefficients of the polynomials so that is given in here a n a n minus 1 a n minus 2 etc up to a 0 so that is written in the first row and the other row second row is formed by reversing the first row so first of all we have to write a n then a n minus 1 then a n minus 2 etc up to last one is a 0 so first and second row is formed easily next we want to find the third row so there is an equation for finding the third row fourth row and fifth row so 
third row can be find out by using the equation so kth element of the third row is given by bk suppose third row is 1 this is one. b0 b1 b2 etc up to bn minus 1 is the third row so that its element is formed by a0 an what is a0 an this is this one a0 an okay a0 n determinant an minus k a k that is the next element so kth element of uh, the third row is formed by using this equation so b0 will be formed by k will be 0 so a0 an an a0 b1 will be equal to a0 an an minus 1 a1 so similarly we can form uh, uh, we can calculate other elements so these elements can be written in the third row so b0 b1 b2 etc up to bn minus 1 constitute the third row so how can we find the fourth row fourth row is the reverse of the third row so here we obtain the third row so fourth row is bn minus 1 bn minus 2 bn minus 3 etc up to b0 so all the even rows are formed by reversing the odd rows so there is different equations for forming the odd rows that is the determinant value this one so next we have to find out the third and fourth we obtained a fifth row fifth row is obtained in the same way that means how how can we find this kth element of the fifth row ck will be equal to so we are utilizing in order to find this element we are utilizing these two just about two rows so b0 bn minus 1 that is the first element b0 bn minus 1 next element is what is an minus k so b b b bn bn minus 1 minus k and the next element is bk so this is the equation b0 bn minus 1 then bn minus 1 minus k b0 so c0 can be find out by k will be 0 so we have to put a 0 here so b0 bn minus 1 bn minus 1 b0 c1 will be k equal to 1 so b0 bn minus 1 k equal to 1 means b, bn minus 2 next one is b1 okay so this is the way we are forming the fifth row so odd elements odd row is formed by using the different equation like this but the even row is formed by reversing the odd row just about row, odd row okay so in general we can say that the elements of a row with the odd row number are calculated using the elements of the two rows just above the concerned row and the row next to the odd numbered row is formed by arranging the elements of the odd numbered row in reverse order okay so for calculating the elements of the row the logic explained is bk and ck this is the equation that we are using for finding the elements of the odd row so this is the uh, way we are forming this table like this okay so up to uh, 2n minus 3 rows we have to continue in this manner finally we will form a table and next we have to find the sufficient condition so uh, the co first column element what we are checking is the first column elements of the table are used to check the following n minus 1 conditions and these n minus 1 conditions are sufficient condition for stability of the system so these n minus 1 conditions are modulus of a0 less than modulus of a n what is a0 see now we have formed this table modulus of a0 less than modulus of a n similarly second condition is modulus of b0 greater than modulus of bn minus 1 where, where is modulus of b0 modulus of b0 greater than modulus of bn minus 1 so first and last element of row is taken what is the next condition it's modulus of c0 greater than modulus of cn minus 2 what is modulus of c0 modulus of c0 greater than modulus of cn minus 2 so first element modulus and the sec last element modulus in a row are connected by using this relation so we have to satisfy these conditions um, we have to check for the satisfaction of these conditions if all these conditions are satisfied so the sufficient condition is satisfied that means the system is stable so if the necessary and sufficient conditions are satisfied then all the poles of the system lie inside the unit circle in the set plane and so the system is stable so if if one of these conditions is not satisfied then we can say that the system is unstable so in order to con check the stability of the system we have to first check the necessary condition if it is satisfied then we have to go for sufficient condition check 
and if the necessary condition is not satisfied then we can directly say that say that the system is unstable so method 1 and method 2 can be used for checking the sufficient conditions first EV. now we have discussed about method 1 and next is method 2 for uh, testing sufficiency and here again we are writing the same equation that is given in the question that is uh, f of z will be given that is a characteristic um, polynomial so the, this is obtained from this um, uh, from this equation or polynomial we are taking the coefficients a0 to a, uh, a, a0 an minus 1 etc up to um, an and so by using that coefficients we are constructing two matrices that are x and y and its order is of n minus 1 uh, so the matrix x is given by a0 a1 a2 etc up to an minus 2 then second row is found by first putting 0 then we will write a0 like that manner similarly it will goes to uh, this point and next y is formed by a2 starting from a2 and it will goes to an then we will start with a3 and last element will be 0 similarly it will be uh, going in this manner so x and y are formed mm, so first we will mm, take the sum of x and y so that we will form another matrix h1 mm, is a sum matrix that is h1 equal to x plus y then we will find the difference matrix h2 that is x minus y so in this method sufficient condition for stability is that the matrices h1 and h2 should be positive inner wise so we will be forming h1 and h2 so the condition for sufficient condition for stability is that the matrix h1 and h2 should be positive inner wise what is its meaning mm, so if we are taking a matrix a it is said to be positive inner wise means if we are taking the central element and its determinant it should be positive and if we are taking the next higher order mm, uh, determinant uh, which is of order n by uh, n which is of order n by n and if it if we are taking its determinant then it should be uh, positive like that here we can say that um, determinant a33 should be positive and determinant of a22 a23 a24 uh, a33 a, a32 a33 a34 a42 a43 a44 are uh, next higher uh, order n by n matrix inside the same matrix so it should also be positive and the next higher order matrix is this one th that also should be positive then we can say that it is positive in a wise if this condition is satisfied that means uh, then a sufficient condition for stability is satisfied that is its meaning so if the necessary and sufficient condition for stability are satisfied then we can say that it is the system is stable um, stable that means the sample data system is stable so this is the two methods for testing the sufficient conditions in the case of jury's test and in doing problems this test will be useful and it is better to use method one for testing sufficient condition okay in the next video we will uh, do a problem uh, that's all about this uh, topic thank you